your game animations feel static or isolated. If you were recently sold game animations that were going to energize your game, but all they ended up doing was moving your pieces up and down, you may be entitled to compensation! There is no monetary compensation. The only compensation is in the form of another Godot node. But not just any node, I'm talking about the tween node! The only node guaranteed to supercharge your animations! Seriously though, tween nodes are a fantastic node to learn to use. They'll make your animations feel like they're part of the game because they're going to programmatically respond to the current game state. That is, after all, what procedural animation is. I feel like that word has become somewhat of a buzzword and thus people are afraid of it because they really don't understand what it means. But I'm hoping to clear up all that confusion in this video here and show you that the tween node is simple and easy to use. I'm Aramis, let's get into it. I'll be showcasing the tween node through the lens of my Chexers series. Currently, we have a few animations added, but we need to do this procedural animation for our movement because the movement isn't predictable and can be different depending on which direction the piece will be moving. To begin, we'll hop into our piece scene and then add a tween node. We're going to rename that tween node tween horizontal. That name will make sense later in this video. Switching over to the script, we're going to create a new function and that function will be named move to new hexagon tile and that will take in a parameter that we will call new hexagon tile. We will need to reference this parameter and other methods within this script, so we will create a new script variable, scrolling up to the top of the script to define it, and we'll call that simply new hex tile. Within our function, we will then immediately set that variable to be equal to the parameter that gets passed in. For our animation, we will want to know the global position of the hexagon slot. We will call dot get slot position to get that, but we do not have that function defined, so flip over into our hexagon tile script and then create that function. Now we want the global position of this slot, so instead of using transform, which would return the local vector three for the position, we need to use dot global transform dot origin to get the position of the slot relative to the game. We can then use to local inside of our piece script to convert that back into a coordinate relative to our piece. We'll call the interpolate property method from our tween node passing in self as the object, for the property, we will use translation colon x. For the initial value, we'll set it to be null, which will be the current value. For the final value, we'll use our hex position local dot x. The duration will be 0.5. The translation type will be linear. And then the ease type will be equal to ease in. We can duplicate that by hitting control D and simply changing the X's into Z's so we're just moving in the horizontal direction. Finally, we are going to start the tween by using dot start. Let's go call this thing. So let's go over to the map node and where we typically add the piece to a new hexagon. Instead, we're going to use the piece to dot move new hexagon tile, passing in the hexagon that we want to move to. Going ahead and running the project now, when we move a piece, we can see that it slides across. However, if we then try to move the piece again, the hexagon does not know that the piece is in that location. So we'll flip it into our tween and then go to the node signals and connect the completed signal into our script. And then we will simply call dot add piece passing in ourself to the new hexagon tile. Then inside our hexagon script, we need to reset the transform of the piece to be vector 3.0 so that we have the correct position. Now when we run the project, we can move our piece, it does still do the sliding, but now we can actually move the same piece again and again. Ideally, we would be able to use the same tween node to also interpolate the y values so that we could go up one for half the time and then down one for half the time. But you can't do that with one call, so my first attempt was to do two separate interpolate properties where you would take the y value of the translation and just increase it by one over half the time and then do a second call where you would decrement the y value of the translation by one using this delay property. You can call it the end of the interpolate property method. Now, that would be great if that worked. However, it doesn't. You can see that when we go ahead and run the project, it'll hop up and then just slam down immediately. To really put a point on this, I can show you that if we go into our hexagon tile script and remove the portion where we reset the piece translation to zero, the piece will now just float in the air like this and be stuck up there. So you can see that only the first property is actually being called in between. Unfortunately, what that means is we're gonna have to do a little bit of a hacky solution here and instead go ahead and create another tween node on our piece. 
But before that, it's always a great idea to do a little bit of code cleanup. So let's create a new function that will be responsible for holding all the different horizontal tweening. We'll call it tween horizontally. I know, great name. That'll take in a two position as a vector three, and then we can move down our X and Y and triplet properties and the start down there. Then we'll just update the two position in those calls to be the new two position we pass in. And it's always a great idea to not have any magic numbers. So we'll have a tween duration set up here that will be 0.5, which we can use in all of our different tween calls. So we'll set that as the duration inside of our X and Y and triplet properties. And then we'll make sure we call this new function within our move to hexagon tiles, passing in the local position for the hexagon tile slot. Go ahead and create another tween node, renaming it to be tween vertical. Then hop back into your script and create a new function called tween vertically. This time we'll take in a Y value and then an ease type. Now go ahead and copy and paste down the interpolate property for the Y value, and then make sure that you update the value to be tween vertical and not tween horizontal, and then call tween vertical dot start. Now we can delete some of that garbage and then make sure that we update the two value to be Y and then the ease type to be the ease type parameter we pass in. Finally, let's call this new function inside the move to hexagon tile function passing in one and then the tween ease type of ease out. Now, when we run the project, we expect that same plopping functionality to occur. Cool. Let's fix that by heading back into the vertical tween and then connecting the completed signal node to our script. Now, we need a way to understand if we've already ran this twice, meaning that we came to the top of the Y value and hit it back down. So we'll create a new variable called has vertical tween ran twice. Make sure that we know that it is a Boolean and then set that to default as false. Now, coming back down into the function, we can check to see if that value is equal to false, meaning that it has not ran twice yet. If that is the case, we are going to run it a second time, so we'll flip that value to be true, so we only run it twice, and then we will call tween vertically, passing in zero because we're going to be on the way down, and then the ease type equal to ease in. The last thing we'll do before we run the project is make sure that we go up into the move hexagon tile function and then set it to false so that we can do this each time we move that piece. And finally, you can see here now we have that nice smooth hopping effect going where it comes up and then comes down very nicely. We can keep running it again. So the tween node was a little hacky. We had to do some weird things, but I think ultimately it is a very powerful node that you can use in a lot of different ways. I'm Aramis. Thanks for watching.